Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and I've been talking about doing this castle tour for a while now, and uh, since it's Friday night and I have no social life and nothing better to do, I thought I'd do it tonight, so here we go. Uh, this is the castle. I've been working on it for many, many, many years. I think I started it back in high school, uh, the, where I first got the basic idea of what I wanted to build, and then I've been working on it for, oh, probably a decade and a half now. And, uh, well, when I finally graduated college and had the funds to throw at silly things like this, I finally got around to actually seriously building on it. Uh, it's got lots and lots of work to do, especially interior details. I've got most of the exterior vaguely where I want it, though there's a lot of things I would like to update. I'd like to get rid of as many of the uh, large castle wall plates as possible and replace them with actual small bricks just because it looks better and allows you for to get more detailing. Uh, especially it looks better on the inside because they're, you know, hollow plates and it just doesn't quite look right. Uh, I also want to do a lot more uh, furniture stuff, um, you know, tables and little little details here and there that make the difference in a, in a big construction like this. Obviously I also want to do a lot more uh, landscaping uh, and little detailing there and the village is a whole project all on its own. But I wanted to start by just going over the, the main interior stuff that I have so far. So... Um, looking at, we'll start at the gatehouse. It does, in fact, have a working uh, portcullis with a, you know, winch here. And then there's a winch on the inside that operates the drawbridge. That whole system needs some redesigning. I was running low on parts and I was just about to move uh, when I built it. And I haven't gotten around to redesigning it since. But the drawbridge does work using the double lever design, which I, I really, really like. Uh, but yeah, a lot of interior work still needs to be done on that. The whole um, portcullis and drawbridge really kind of uh, dictated some of the design uh, aspects because I couldn't have it come off quite by layers because things were attached. Uh, but most of the rest of it comes apart one floor at a time. And I do have fully functioning staircases everywhere that there should be a staircase. Uh, and then this is one of the gatehouses that, or the guard towers that actually has been completed so you can actually see a little cot in there for the guards and weapon racks and a water barrel and little details like that sconces and so forth uh, that will slowly but surely get fleshed out more and more in as the tower as the castle goes along i'm gonna run out of places to put all the pieces um the gatehouse the back of it comes off and this is a room that really needs a lot of work, but once again, fully functioning staircases. Um, this one's got a doubled one so that you can actually get to the little windows. It's kind of a balcony looking thing. Uh, this tower is exactly the same as the other one. They are just complete mirrors of each other for the first two floors. So this one has all the same interior features. But that side goes a few more floors down as you can see that one the mountain reaches all the way up to that floor this one the tower goes further down just because of the way the mountain was built uh, and this is just an empty room i have well actually i do have a little cot in there that's right uh, because this is the uh essentially the apartment for the stable so the stable hand and you know the groomsmen and so forth uh have their living quarters in that section of tower and then this one involves a secret passageway behind one of the horse stalls and then a uh, secret door below that going down into the room in the very base of the tower that currently has nothing in it whatsoever. But there could be something interesting in there. I kind of designed, actually very much designed this to be used in a D&D campaign someday. Uh, and so that's why there's all the tunnels and passageways and hidden rooms and all of that can be modified depending on the adventure so never have gotten around to actually doing said adventure but uh someday someday i hope let's see let's look at the stables now i don't know if this has ever come up but seamstress at arms uh is a professional horse rider uh sure her, her youth was uh pretty much entirely spent on horseback uh, and then uh, she went off to college, and now she's back doing horse riding. She does trail rides, and uh, as well as being uh, a professional seamstress. Um, and so when I built the stables, 
I contacted her, and I had her come over, and help me design them so that I made sure that I got them accurate. Uh, and, I mean, it's small, but there were little details that I would have never thought of. For instance, when I first put uh, these tool racks in there, the broom racks and the, the forklift racks and all of that, I did not have this little divider there. Uh, this little gate to protect them. And when I put those there, she, her, her first thought was, and she said it out loud, was, no, you can't put those there. The horse will eat the, the bristles on the brush. And then stopped herself and went, no, no, no. This isn't real. It doesn't need to be that accurate. And I said, no, no, that is exactly the, the, the accuracy that I'm on. I would have never thought of that. Uh, but that little detail makes a huge difference, I think. So uh, I put the little barrier there so that the horse could not eat the bristles off of the broom. So, it was really neat. She added little, <laughs> I think you can actually see them in there, uh, little horse droppings um, in the back of the stall, because <laughs> horses. Um, and then the, the top floor is the hayloft, which then, I think you can kind of see the hayloft, uh, and then leads into the apartments from there. And you can see that there's caves underneath, but we will get to them probably in a whole different video, honestly. Uh, let's move on to the gatehouse. Like I said, the uh, mechanisms for the drawbridge are up in the gatehouse and definitely need to be redesigned because they're not where they really should be in a functional castle. Uh, this is the winch that controls the portcullis. Uh, there are rooms on either side up here that still do not currently have any purpose. They will probably be apartments for guards or some such. Uh, so they'll just have beds and maybe a table or something. Uh, those come out. And then there's a room here, which I was planning to make the dog kennels for hunting dogs. Uh, just because that seemed like a good place to have them right by the front door. Uh, couldn't think of anything else to put in there. Uh, and then this side is a storeroom that can be gotten through, gotten to through the stables, uh, that then has a staircase leading down, you can see the hole there on the bottom, that leads down into a storeroom in the base of the guardhouse, but once again, we'll get into the underground in a different video. Next building over is the blacksmith's shop. Uh, and it also has... An apartment in the upstairs which I have done nothing with uh, that is where there should definitely be uh, you know beds and dressers and you know tables and all of that uh, and it's just gotten to through a staircase from the outside and then the blacksmith shop is in the base you can see the uh, forge which is heated from below uh, and his tool rack which is in fact a hidden door that leads into the base of this tower that then goes down into a room in the dungeon that, once again, will be gone over in a different video. Next, we just have a section of wall, and there's actually nothing interesting about it at all. The base is solid, and then there is an archer gallery on top that can be gotten to through the uh, stable's apartment. So, when the castle is attacked, that would be the section of the wall that he would be expected to help defend through archery through one of the arrow slings, uh, because everyone in the castle has to help defend. We then have the uh, side gatehouse, which is the big pointy roof that I've always wanted to build and finally hit all the parts to. It also has a working uh, portcullis that's winched from the top, as well as having its own doors. Um, other than that, there's not much in here. It just passes through so that the people on the top of the tower can get across, um, but doesn't allow access to the archer gallery. Uh, there will eventually be murder holes designed so that somebody could get trapped in between the, the portcullis and the door and could have things rained down upon them. It's got little functional archer windows for throwing stuff down and rocks and whatnot. Very nice. I was really pleased with how that tower came out. Another section of just tower with an archer gallery, nothing fancy. We will head on over to the other side and come back to the keep. Like I said, this one has an apartment up top, uh, but there's currently nothing in it. 
Um, and then the base can't be gotten into because it's just a staircase that leads down into one of the areas in the dungeon. Um, the stables and the blacksmith shop uh, have the stairs uh, on them that lead up to the archer galleries on the V's. So the stairs not attached to the wall section, it's attached to the uh, stables. Or on this side, the blacksmith shop. Next, more interesting building is the Wizard's Tower, because every good fantasy castle should have a Wizard's Tower. And on top are all my multicolored wizards, because I thought that was clever when I was a small child, and I still do. The top has, is eventually going to be a very interesting room full of all sorts of magical doodads and knickknacks and shelves and tables and weird creatures and glass jars. Uh, currently, all it has is what is the b prototype for a planetarium, with all the planets circling around a sun, uh, and it is powered, and you really, it's going to be hard to show you this from here, but uh, in the base of the tower there's a water wheel because there's a little water passageway that leads underneath through the well, and there's a little water wheel that, when you rotate it, causes the planetarium to rotate. I'll get into more detail on that once I have more detail on that. Uh, but that was actually a really fun thing to design because uh, this tower still comes apart def despite the fact that it has a drive shaft that goes all the way up into it. First floor down from there is um, a room full of, it's got a workbench and bookshelves that don't currently have any books and a trapdoor that leads down to the top staircase. Um, there actually is currently, as far as I know, no way to get to the very top of the Wizard's Tower other than, I assume, magic. That was the one room that I had trouble figuring out how to have an actual full staircase and still have all the functionality I wanted, so I decided to make it mysterious. Ooh. Well, at least that's what I'm claiming. The truth is I just couldn't be bothered to figure out how to make it work yet. And then the very base of the tower is basically just a, uh, a foyer, a meeting room, and a staircase that goes up. And a staircase that goes down into the basement of the wizard's tower where the uh, water wheel is. There will be more interesting stuff down there. Once again, we will get to the under section in a separate video. Ah, the back tower is just like the front. Two towers, same interior, same bed and weapon racks. Again, um, staircase that leads up to the... Archer gallery, and then an, an apartment in the middle, and more archer galleries. There is a room in the base of this tower that can be gotten to through a secret passageway behind the altar in the temple. Uh, don't know what's going to be back there. Could be, you know, evil necromantic priests. Could just be a rectory. Who knows? And it's one of those things, if you're doing a D&D campaign, it could be either, depending on the campaign. The beauty of Lego, which is why I wanted to use Lego for a D&D campaign. Because it's infinitely modular. <laughs> which, we all know, I like. Uh, bell towers for the temple. And then we have the temple, with little monks. Uh, actually has stained glass and buttresses, and really like how it came out. And... Lots of interior detail need to go in here. Wall hangings and carvings and statues. And There's one statue in there now, and there is an uh, altar at the base, which slides open. It is a secret passageway that leads down into the crypts under the temple, because every good temple should have crypts. Um, the crypt is the most heavily secret passaged place in the castle. There's, I believe, one, two, three, four, five different secret passages leading into the temple, uh, into the crypt, which is just a design flaw in a fantasy place where, you know, zombies are a thing. But that was kind of the point. I want there to be lots of ways in and out just for adventure reasons. I need to redesign this because the buttresses currently connect to the base and they really should connect to the temple and come off. Um, but we'll get, that's a redesign that needs to happen at some point in the future. All right, that brings us to the keep, which is interesting enough. I'm going to try to reposition the camera to get a better view of it. All right, so this is the main keep of the castle, which is designed off the, the Norman castle design and then curtain wall, which is kind of the idea I was going for for the castle in general. 
Uh, so the only way into it um, from the outside, any well, yeah. There's lots of secret passages into the keep, of course. But the main one is this doorway here, which we will get to when we go down a few levels. Uh, it's got a uh, small tower on the top and a spiral staircase that actually does function and goes all the way, I think... I don't remember how many levels it goes down, at least. But it starts up here and goes down several levels. This is one of the floors that actually does have some interior detail done. I've got the... King's big fancy bed there that uh, Seamstress at Arms built for me, designed that. Um, some furniture, there's a dresser drawers and I need to get some benches and tables and all of that. And there is the uh, throne, audience chamber, the court as it were. Uh, balconies with a lovely lady that was sent to me, I believe, by one of my fans, which is awesome because I didn't have any princesses. So... That was really cool to be able to have that little addition. I didn't have any that were that detailed. I had the old one from the early 90s, uh, which was not nearly as cool looking. So, next floor down, we have the main kitchen and uh, feast hall. So I've got a big U-shaped table for the feasting, and then this will be the kitchen. There's a large stove, and there's a fish on a table, and there will be... Uh, food in the pantry eventually, like I said, details. Spiral staircase continues. There's a floor missing. Where'd the floor go? There it is. So this next section for various design reasons that I may try to redesign. Um, uh, okay, so the next level, the floor actually comes out rather than the thing coming off. And that was for design reasons of the way the mountain ended up being designed, but I now think I have the parts to redesign it properly so that this is, in fact, an independent floor that comes off. Uh, previously, the way the mountain, the large uh, pre-built mountain pieces that I used here interacted, it didn't come off nicely. Uh, but I, like I said, I believe I have the parts that I could rebuild it uh, without using those pre-built parts, and then it would come off nicely. But, as it is, it all comes off. The floor comes off, and that the first floor is the guardhouse, where there would be the armory, lots of weapons, uh, bunks for the soldiers, all of that. More details that I haven't gotten to, largely because the floor design made it just not work well. Uh, spiral staircase continues, and this is where it ends on the what would be the ground floor, as it were. And then underneath that, which can be gotten to... Oh, wait, that was wrong. The spiral staircase goes down one more floor. Uh, the spiral staircase does, in fact, go all the way down into the... Not actually the dungeon, uh, it's the uh, treasure room. This will be the treasure room, but I'm lacking doors for it. Uh, and there's a secret passageway going into it. From across from the temple, there's uh, an exterior secret passageway. Uh, and then there's a secret passageway on the floor that leads down into the dungeon. Which is, once again, part of the uh, subsection that uh, we're not going into today because we got to space this stuff out. So, that was the castle. Now, if you look at what's left, you have just the pretty much just the base mountain that it was all built on. Uh, and it is an absolute honeycomb of secret passageways and dungeons and crypts and caves and all sorts of neat stuff down there that we will get into in the next video. So, I'm going to put this thing back together, and that'll be it for today. There it is. I'm sure it comes as no surprise to you that even my Lego castle uh, is modular because I'm me. Uh, I do have all sorts of plans for doing interior details. Like I said, lots of furniture, more landscaping, mossy bits out here, and the, the dungeon is going to be so much fun to do all the details on that. And I'm also looking forward to more details in the village. A um, couple of the buildings are do have full interior detail already, but most of them... Seriously, need a couple of them. I haven't the foggiest idea of what I'm actually planning to put in them yet, so that will be uh, fun to work on. I've been slowly acquiring the parts necessary from a couple of local Lego stores, and uh, yeah, so there's that. Next time I will go into the dungeons, and you can see what all 
where all the secret passageways link up and all of that. It's all interconnected and it's all designed for use in adventures that I hope to run someday. So stay tuned. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, uh, if you want to call me a huge nerd, you go right ahead. And as always, thank you for watching.